Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a good week up until this point. Hopefully things are going uh, the way you plan to certain, to some extent. If not, uh, my, my hopes and desires for you is that you continue to push until you reach your desired goal. Look, uh, I'm not going to be long. Uh, you know the routine. If you believe in the work we do, show your love, show your support. The way you can support us is in the description box. Okay. Uh, I just had this come across my desk. I'm not sure how old it is, but from what I understand, it's recent. Um, a father in Harlem is mourning the death of his 25-year-old son, Malik Burrow, who died uh, by way of stabbing on his birthday. Um... His older brother, Robert Burrow, 29, was also stabbed, but is in stable condition in the hospital. The person who stabbed them, Junior Hernandez, black, um, was arrested, but charges dropped uh, pending a further investigation. And so let me break it down if you haven't heard the story. Uh, this is in Harlem, New York. Uh, it's Malik who has just turned 25. It's his birthday and his older brother, Robert, goes to the neighborhood fish market to get some shrimp for his grandmother to cook for the birthday. When there, he gets into a dispute. Uh, a witness on the scene says that he stuffed a lobster in his pants and was trying to leave with a bag of shrimp and the lobster and they jumped on him and fought with him and he ended up dropping the bag of shrimp and leaving. But he returned uh, to the store with the younger brother Malik, whose birthday it was, and they jumped the counter, started throwing chairs, and got into a scuffle with the employees. One of the employees, uh, Junior Hernandez, grabbed a knife, and this is a very large knife, and repeatedly stabbed Malik. And after repeatedly stabbing Malik, they're trying to get out of the place right now. He's still stabbing. After stabbing Malik, he turns and starts to stab Robert. Um, and ultimately, Malik dies. Robert is rushed to the hospital. The father is interviewed, and he's devastated, as you can expect. And the reason I'm addressing this is after reviewing this, everything that happened was avoidable. The father is insisting that there's no reason for his son to steal. There is a witness that was on the scene that says he saw him put something in his uh, pants. Um, whether that's true or not, we still have a very avoidable situation. And there is some culpability on all sides. So we're going to start with the first level of culpability, the most prominent level of culpability. When you go into somebody else's establishment and you act in a manner that violates their space, I don't care how uh, disappointed you are, what level of disagreement you get into. When you jump that counter, you take your life into your own hand. Well, actually, you put it in their hands if they are prepared. Uh, and the thing is, again, I say this all the time. I've taught my kids this. I say it all, all the time that 
when you violate a person, when you take it upon yourself to cross the line and violate them with word, it definitely with touch or threat, contact or threat. You don't get to dictate their response. You don't get to say, well, I pushed them. They didn't have a right to hit me or I hit them. They didn't have a right to stab me or whatever. The moment you violate a person, they're going to respond at the level that they're escalated to in their own mind, through their own emotions, through their own reactions, whatever, uh, their own programming. You don't get to control that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to understand that I don't want to go out consistently putting myself at risk behind things that aren't that significant. So let's frame this so that we give this significance. I'm just taking some notes so I can make sure to make a point. I once sit in a room with a person who was trying to teach a point about gratitude. And while it's a little off the path, it's going to make sense to you in a minute. And the question is, if I give you a million dollars, how would that make you feel? Would it make you happy? Would you be excited? Yes. Say, okay, so what if I gave you not just a million dollars, I gave you $10 million, but I told you that if you accept that $10 million, you wouldn't wake up in the morning. Would you accept it? The answer, the consensus answer was absolutely not. So what you're telling me is waking up in the morning that your life has more value than $10 million is what you're immediately telling me, is that at the very minimum, your life is worth more than 10 million. And the reason I say that is when you start to think about things in monetary value, there's no price tag that you can put on a life. So you should have this utmost value and respect for life, something that is lost amongst us, something that is lost in the struggle and the fight for power and respect, something that I deal with significantly in the African-American male uh, population, especially African-American adolescent and young adult males. This idea that being uh, disrespected means escalating things to the point where someone's probably going to get hurt at the very minimum and possibly killed. There's no value on human life, something that I have fought desperately to engage and change through programs like Black Men League is an understanding of the importance of the black male in our community. And if we understand the importance of of who we are in the community, two things happen. We're less likely to put ourselves in harm's way because we understand the importance of the role we play and how much we're needed. And we're less likely to take the life of another black man because we understand he's needed as well. We start to see the value in ourselves. We will transfer that value to others who look like ourselves. But when we don't, we tend to strike out against that person. It's not only because we haven't really truly uh, examined the value we hold or the value we possess within ourselves, in our community. Uh, So when I go back and I look at this, the first thing is that should be a level of emotional intelligence that's lacking in a general sense. There are some extremely emotionally intelligent young people um, within the community, male and female, but there's too many, there are too many of us, um, not just the young group, there are some older uh, men and women who lack emotional intelligence. The problem is when you lack emotional intelligence, it means that you are unaware of the influence of your emotions and the gravity of their influence on your behavior. And you tend to act off of those emotions and you tend to make decisions and choices that are not, um, conducive to you achieving the desired results you want. You end up in situations you regret a lot because you act off of emotion. 
So we go back, and the first thing that we have to say is, number one, if he was stealing, he shouldn't have been stealing. Number two, whatever he tried to walk out with that door that drew the ire of the people that wanted to fight him, once he got out of that door, he should not have come back. Number two, he definitely shouldn't have drug his little brother back into a situation where you don't know what the other side is working with. You go, you, you, you go to another fish market, you go whatever. The idea that you got to ask yourself, and this is the thing what happens when you don't have emotional uh, intelligence. You don't ask yourself the right questions. You don't put yourself in a situation in which you are saying, is this worth losing my life? Now, there's a side of me that very few people will know now because I've grown a lot. You know, I've had a lot of years to mature. I've had a lot of years to develop emotionally, uh, mature emotionally, gain an understanding of how emotions work in my life and to help a lot of people as well. But there was a time as a teenager that it didn't take much to take me to the other side. And, and I tell people all the time that I think, like Dr. King says, I think every man should have something he's willing to die for. It was Dr. King that says that a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. And I believe that. I just believe that as you mature and you grow older, the thing for which you're willing to die becomes a lot more prominent in the overall scope of things. I'm willing to die to protect my family. There are certain beliefs I hold I'm willing to stand and die on. But somebody saying something I don't like, that no longer is something worth dying over. Somebody calling me out of my name is no longer worth dying. That was a point in time that it was. And you have to grow up. You have to sit up. And I remember when it all changed for me. I became a father at a very early age. And the moment that I found out that I was going to be a father, I'm still a teenager. It all, all of a sudden hit me. I'm not leaving my kids without a father. My presence is necessary. Proving to somebody I'm not a punk doesn't do anything to feed my children. It doesn't do anything to give my children an identity. It doesn't do anything for me in the fulfilling of my purpose in this world. He didn't live long, but he wasn't a punk. But... I also had proper male modeling that was easy for me to look into and, you know, and, and they went, mate, you need to slow your ass down. You know, my grandfather, you need to slow your ass down. You, 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 you're not the baddest person in the world. There's somebody out there that you may even be better than that's scared of you. That'll get you. And that's the thing. So, just on the front end of this, Robert Burrow now has to live with the fact that he got banged up pretty bad. Looks like he's going to survive. But he got his little brother killed. His little brother was at home. He went home and got his little brother to come back and fight people over something that wasn't theirs. And even if it was theirs, let's go back to this whole $10 million thing. I doubt if they had $10 million worth of shrimp, so I doubt if it was worth going in there dying over. You know, I mean, we have so much that we've got to work on, and we're so busy investing ourselves in things that don't matter. We're so busy investing ourselves in things that have no intrinsic value that we're not seeing the results of our inactivity, of our uh, lack of true engagement in issues that are plaguing our community. Our kids are killing one another. And all we're doing is oh and oh and oh my God and, and shaking my head. That, that doesn't change anything. There has to be a focus on what can be done. I've been talking about proper socialization for decades. I've been talking about proper engagement, proper male modeling, proper de defi effectively defining manhood. And, and manhood isn't how violent you can be. It's a willingness to be violent when necessary, 
but it's it's not the defining thing about you the defining thing about you is that you are a protector that you are a provider that you are a covering that you are a leader and it's hard to be that in a grave it's hard to be that in a prison cell and there's a reason we keep talking about these 1.5 million men missing in the community 1.3 of them are locked up another large number of them are dead and so we've got this big gap on what uh on the vision and the in the model of manhood the the observation of men being men there's there's a big gap and and it's on us to change that it's on us to be engaged in that. Now, that's the front end. The back end side of that is, based on the video footage and everything you can see, this kid, Junior Hernandez, who is black, black, uh, obviously of uh, Hispanic descent, pulls a knife, comes from behind the counter, and repeatedly stabs, according to what 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 is being said they're they're going out and he's still poking uh now again once you violate a person you don't get to dictate what's going on there are a couple of things i don't know whose seafood place this is but i i'm, I'm going to venture out and this is truly speculation and i could be dead wrong but i'm gonna say it's not juniors or his parents so he's not defending anything that actually belongs to him. He's at work. And I'm not dying or giving up my freedom for something that does not belong to me. That's why I don't, you know, you ain't gonna get me to take a security gig because if they want it, they can have it. I'm not finna die for it. You're not paying me enough. But Junior comes out and goes to work. Now, what I can tell you is this is probably what likely happened. This is Harlem. This is, you know, a certain part of Harlem. I'm almost certain this is the first time somebody tried to take food. This is the first time they haven't been robbed. When you've been victimized, whether you see it as from, from the eyesight of a victim or a survivor, if someone's done something to you that violated you, and it's happened more than once. At some point, you, you're thinking, I'm tired of being the victim. And you start saying, this is the day that I fight back. And for all we know, this could have been Junior's day that he just sit up and said, okay, enough is enough. You keep These people keep running up in here thinking I'm a punk. There's it, there it is again. You know, you, and you don't know what happens every time something like that happens. What's said to them? You just sit up there and run up. What, you scared? You know, you acting like a punk. You don't know. And again, this is speculation. This could have just been a bad day for Junior. Or Junior could have just been one of them killers that you finna run up here on me. I got you. And again, because you don't get to dictate a person's response. Be sure when you show up or you come for somebody that you're prepared to pay the consequences. See, that's one thing that I did learn. I learned that early. There was never a time I came from somebody that I wasn't willing to lay it all down. I'm just thankful to God that I outgrew that very early. And I determined that there were a lot of other ways to make my impact on the world besides proving I wasn't a punk. Now we have families devastated. Junior's future is up in the air because while they dropped them the murder charges he could still be charged with assault or the murder charges can be recharged i mean refiled um and he's probably gonna have to look over his back because there are gonna be other people in the hood that want to get at him because they they malik boys and here we go this is an ongoing thing because i'm pretty sure junior's got boys too you see what i'm saying you see where i'm going with this one poor decision draws an entire community one direction or another and it can go on and definitely i've seen it i've seen it i've seen it in the worst way beefing about bs ending up costing life something you can't give back once you take a life there's no amount of goodwill 
benevolence, kindness, penitence that you can perform that's going to erase that thing you've done. That's some redemption in life. Life is about redemption. But in that, you will always have to live with the fact that you took another person's life. And if it doesn't bother you, there's a whole nother thing you need to be working on. And the problem is we have normalized violence in our communities at a level that it is what it is. And the problem is you cannot grow, you cannot build in an environment where it's acceptable to cause harm to the people within the environment. We can't talk about black empowerment. We can't talk about battling white supremacy. We can't talk about overcoming an oppressive system with, if within our own community we are destroying one another. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. There's that African proverb I constantly and consistently cite because it's so powerful. The more I start to work on me, the more I start to work on what's within. I don't get to dictate what other people do, but they have, it has less impact on me. Why? Because I'm taking control of my life, my destiny, my situation. It's when I start to be harmful to myself that problems uh, arise. And we are going to, after, as a people, learn how to manage who we are develop emotional intelligence, de develop a sense of self, develop a sense of identity, develop a direction, uh, develop an agenda, have an understanding and a level of clarity of where it is we want to go. Just talking about black empowerment with no idea of what it means, how it looks, how it feels, how it's accomplished is useless. I know for a fact that it cannot be accomplished with us attacking one another. We've got to find a place of love. We've got to learn how to handle one another. We've got to learn how to make better decisions. Again, this doesn't happen if Robert doesn't go in there and do and, and doing what he did. It doesn't happen if he doesn't leave and bring back his brother. It doesn't it doesn't happen. Yes. Junior could have did a lot of other things besides pull that knife. But if he felt like his coworkers were in a bind, because they were going, they were going toe to toe with the other coworkers, and they across the counter, you over on their side of where they, where, where a worker is at work, and no matter how upset a customer is, that should be that barrier, that counter, that says you stay over there. You can say whatever you want to say. You come across that counter, you're in my space. I'm threatened, and all bets are off. And we have to understand that we are so comfortable crossing barriers instead of learning how to have manage conflict. We are horrible at conflict resolution. And now a parent is going to be burying a 25-year-old son, nursing a 29-year-old son back to health. It's still possible that the 29-year-old son could end up incarcerated. Another parent is looking at whether or not their son is going to be arrested at any given moment. So he's living with a cloud over his head until it's determined what's going to happen. And here we are. We've got to do better. You know, we've got to do more than talk about it, too. Um... I was talking to someone earlier today who happens to be a client, but they followed me for years before they ever hired me. And we were talking about what needs to be done in the community. And the key word is collaboration. The key word is working together. The key word is unity. Uh, and the problem is nobody wants to work together. Everybody wants to be that person. Everybody wants to be recognized. There's way too much competition. Uh, I don't, I, like I said, and I've, you've heard me say this before. This isn't new. I don't care about my name being on anything. I don't care about anybody patting me on the back. I'm not here for a pat on the back. I'm not here for recognition. I'm here for results. I'll work with anybody that's going to get anything done. If you have a clear plan and path, uh, I'm not here for all the convoluted BS and all that. I'm here for let's go in their community. Let's develop it. We First of all, we need think tanks. 
we need to do more research. I'm right at 80,000 hours of research on all the things ailing blacks. And another 100,000 needs to be done. And so we need researchers. We need funding for research. I self-funded my research. And it sounds simple until you are actually a researcher and you understand how much it costs to conduct a study, how much it costs to put research together, to do everything that needs to be done. And then I developed the programs out of what was revealed in the research. Again, I'm not here for pats on the back, but what I am saying is let's get together. Let's find a solution. Let's work together. Let's find out how we each fit into this dynamic of empowerment and start acting. We're losing our kids, not just to violence on one another. We're losing our kids to a lack of sense of self and identity. Uh, social media is destroying them. Music is destroying them. Everything is aimed at breaking them down and taking away their true identity, their worth, their power, their sense of self, all the things that will guide them to a platform of power. is being They're being robbed of it, and we are doing very little to stop it. That's on us. We need to stop normalizing counterproductive behavior, uh, which includes violence, which includes ignorance, which includes um, competing in, against one another. It definitely includes this gender war that's going on. It includes men, our men competing against our women. All these different things that are happening, it needs to stop. This won't be a popular video. Anytime there's anything of substance, it won't be popular. But again, I'm not here for the likes. I'm not here for the pats on the backs. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to teach. I'm here to guide. I'm here to bring forth ideas, concepts, philosophies that lean towards black empowerment. You don't have to like me. But somebody's going to have to eventually do something besides talk. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. As I, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you believe in the work that we're doing, go to the description box, look in the description box, and there's a way that you can support our work. We will continue to do what we do as long as I'm alive and breathing. On that note, I'm